There you go. We've already heard a number of bold uh, proposals tonight, and our next speaker is making another countercultural bet. Please, I'm going to ask you to welcome Martin Staines to our stage, or I'm sorry, Javier Staines to our stage, because he's going to talk to us about slow journalism. Thank you, Chris. Okay, uh, someone in the forest, someone said, how strange are the civilized people? They all have watches and smartphones, but nobody has time. Well, not everything has to be so fast. I mean, there are still bunches of people that uh, they take a break to look for friendship, for real relationships, face to face, for example, for love. Uh, we are people that doesn't like to eat this. They reject, they, they don't consume fast food, fast fashion, fast dates and even fast news. People that walk and read and breathe. Because fast is, is a paradox. It's like this. What we think is fast is not really fast. And by the way, we are not the same everywhere. We have different needs, we are diverse. We have different beliefs, interests, preferences. Sometimes we don't want fast, we just want better. So in our world, news and content, we can have the best of the two worlds, fast and slow, not pretended journalists like this last guy. And uh, what really means is slow journalist projects is about this new term, globalization. Of course, this term is very bad. It's a loss of steam, recession, what comes uh, now, in the next year. But it's not journalism matters. I mean, we, we can fight with the reality, with technology, but uh, there are kind of a mix of doing everything in all formats, in all platforms. This is not a war. It works. We can see a lot of projects, independent, inspiring, thoughtful, high quality, Maybe for mad and stubborn minority people, it's not easy. It's not for the masses. The slow journalism is about targeting specific communities, looking for a different view, for deepest analysis, for context and perspective. They want to take an, a breath. They want perspective. They want uh, provoking thoughts, inspiration, orientation, understanding, also irreverence and humor. And it takes time, not only for creation, it takes time for reading and, and, uh, and playing with it, processing it, like all worthy learning cycles. People share these stories, not only memes, like this amazing uh, approach of how to the internet works in places like India or China or, or Cuba and Russia. That is a very profound story made by a traditional media like The Guardian. And what about, uh, what about Latin America? I'm running very fast, I think. Okay. <laughs> but it takes a lot of time, as you can see. This, this gets stuck, okay? <laughs> well, this is Spain, but Spain offers us sometimes uh, an interesting lantern. Okay, there are still surviving slow journalist projects like this, very traditional, and of course there are others to watch in the independent lane. The bad news, yes, there are very, very many, many bad news. There are Emblematic projects like these are, are or dead or dying. And it's sad. And there's also dinosaurs like this. When we woke up, the dinosaur was still alive. Okay, and uh, they're still alive 
some of the traditional projects doing uh, this stuff and with uh, financial health. More good news is challenging, but possible. There are print and, and digital and all formats kind of new projects that are uh, uh, just flourishing across our region. We need it. As the editors of Amphibia Narrative Journalist Chronicle Digital Magazine from Argentina say, Latin America still has an enormous record of non-told stories. So let's face that contradiction, let's do everything in, in our way. We know this motto from the Washington Post, and uh, I'm, I'm supposed everybody here shared it. So narrative journalism can be alive and kicking, as this little very famous guy say, there's nothing more powerful than a very good story. Thank you very much.